So you've arrived at last. Well done. Hello, Grandmother. Is that the reflecting pool? Yes. Though the proper name for it is the Spectral Moon Mirror. Oh, the water's so crystal clear. So this is what the Wandering Witches spent so many generations watching over. Now I see. It's actually an artifact, isn't it? F for real? Hmm. It does emanate a certain aura, not unlike that of the Bell of Crossbell. Very astute. That particular artifact was passed down through the Kreuz family. It is but one of many. The tetracyclic towers of the Burl, the recluse cube of the Liberarch, the black records of the Arnor family, even Prince Oliver's sonorous seashell. Legend says Adios bestowed artifacts to a number of different groups back in the days of yore. Which would mean this mirror was the artifact consigned to the witches. Correct. The Spectral Moon Mirror works in tandem with the Black Records, and is itself connected to the Spirit Shrine scattered about the land. It is also the source of the many visions you have experienced. Nevertheless, it is quite a rarity for its powers to manifest, even for us witches. But everything changed the moment we congregated together in this shrine. Emma, the wandering witch, and Selene, her familiar. Schwarzer, the cursed sacrifice, and I, the elder of the Hexen clan. The great twilight is upon us, and a frenzied thirst for blood sweeps over the land. So we're really doing this? Red Moon Rose, the true ancestor of the vampires. <laughs> the term vampire is little more than slander. A myth that masks the reality of my kin. Although, when it comes to manipulating vitality, I suppose there is a hint of truth to the tales. Holy beast. You're... The origin of Grianos and myself. Roselia was the name once born by an ancient creature. Twelve hundred years ago, it fused with the kin of fire's elder to prevent a great calamity of their time. This creature was the holy beast sent forth by the goddess, the Burning Sphinx. Grandmother! So you're the one the church has been searching for. The other holy beast, long thought to have disappeared. Damn, who would have guessed? As I have already stated, I am not the first to bear the name Roselia. The original disappeared 900 years ago, likely due to the gnome's betrayal. I began my existence as a familiar, not unlike Selene. What? My predecessor showed me this place, telling me to return here should anything happen to her. I obeyed, and when I arrived, the spectral moon mirror allowed me to inherit a part of her memories, as well as her mission. Thus did I become the second Roselia. <sighs> Come to think of it, that bird Vita used to own had azure wings just like those. So both familiars were made in the image of the holy beast that created them. Now I understand why you wanted Selene to come here. Indeed. The great twilight is upon us, and our clash with the gnomes draws ever closer. Given the state of the world and the coming of the rivalries, nothing is guaranteed. As such, should the worst come to pass, 
Selene is to serve as my successor. But that would mean... Rose, just what are you planning to do? Nothing so drastic as dying, I assure you. But we must account for every possibility. Filling the air with strife will cause the reflecting pool to show us visions linked to the Black Records. Having a wandering witch and the ultimate sacrifice here should allow us to see the truth of this curse in its entirety. Uh. I see. We need to uncover the full vision. All the glimpses we saw in the other shrines were just pieces of it. And in order to trigger it, we need to fight. So we're really going to fight you? Without holding anything back? Precisely. Now, enough dawdling! Whoa! What a formidable aura. But we can't back down now. Right. It's now or never! Class sevens, new and old. It's time to face our greatest trial yet. We'll prove the time Milium bought for us was not in vain. We will fight to uncover the hidden truth. I've got a few choice words to say about all this, Rose. But I'll fight you first and complain later. <laughs> then come, children. Face me with the full extent of your strength. We shall see how you fare against the Hexen Clan's elder. I, a holy beast of the goddess, Roselia the Burning Sphinx! Come forth, lest hesitation be your undoing! Let's go! Shimmer! Luminary Force! I'm up! Roar! <sighs> Helix Strike! <laughs> Weak! Now! An opening! Take that! Yes! Got it. Yes! Hmm. Got it. Arcus, activate! Yes! Huh? Yeah. Yes! Arcus, activate! Restore you? <laughs> Thanks for the help. Let's go. Shimmer! Luminary Force! It's my turn. Yeah! As far as your power goes, it's my turn. Arcus, activate. Let's go. Good luck. Leave it to me. Thanks for the help. 
It's my turn. Huh? Yes. Arcus, activate. Hm. Got it. Leave it to me. Divine shield. Protect us! Yeah! <sighs> I'm going! Huh? Turn. Yeah. It's my turn. My turn. Yeah. Ha. I'll restore you. <laughs> Thanks for the help. Yes. Arcus, activate. I'm going. Now's our chance. It's my turn. Say. Now. It's mine. Hm. Got it. Huh. Now. There. Impressively done. That's a big win for us. Indeed. Let us continue onward. All right, got it. <laughs> I grew a little. I did it. <laughs> I did it. Well, no surprise there. <laughs> a matter of course. <gasps> I did it. Stats updated. Huh? <laughs> How'd you like that, huh? That was tough, but I think we did it. I didn't expect you to be able to hold your ground so fiercely, children. Now I understand how Ragnard and I must have felt after facing your kind. Huh? I know of the ancient dragon, but the other name... It sounds similar to that of the Steel Maiden's Divine Knight. It is a name that has passed from this world into oblivion. But back to the matter at hand. You have all passed the trials set before you. As for what comes next, you had best brace yourselves. The spectral moon mirror, it's... I'll guide us through! Everyone, get ready! <sighs> what is this? The fragments of the past preserved in the Black Records. A reality even I have yet to see. Do not avert your eyes. This 
is the truth. Damn it! Why? How could the boss just leave us like this? He told us to take care of Fee. He must have been prepared for this. The boss dragged Balder the War God straight down to Gehenna with him. I'm sure he's happy about that. And yet... What a shame. It would seem I failed to make it in time. You. Ain't you that guy from the workshop? Why, yes. Oh, I do hope our S-weapons are serving you well. I have a certain... proposal that you might find of interest. And as it so happens, everything we need to execute it can be found nearby. If all goes well, it may be possible to bring your boss back to life. What was that? <sighs> now you're just talking crazy. Very well. I cannot fault your suspicion. Perhaps the Red Constellation would be interested in having their leader back instead. There is, after all, only room for one in this deal. Congratulations on completing your trial. I trust you understand your situation, Rutger Klossel. Yeah, let me see if I got this straight. I get to pilot Zector, one of the fragments of the Great Power. Which means, somehow or another, I ended up being the Chosen Sap. But not by old Palatinate over there, per se. You set me up, didn't you? Oh, and what makes you say that? Don't play dumb. I know you've been giving weapons to both us and the Red Constellation. Wouldn't be any of my business ordinarily, but when I fought Balder, I realized something strange was going on. We duped it out for three days and three nights straight. You guys gotta wonder how that's even possible. <laughs> and on top of that, this big thing just happened to be sleeping right next to where we died. I can't even remember why we chose that place for our final showdown. But it's obvious to me now. You've been the one pulling the strings behind our backs this whole time. <laughs> Relinquish it to me. It belongs to me. Your soul. Your entire being. <laughs> you never do tire of this, do you? You are the embodiment of delusion. Repulsive, without a single shred of dignity, unlike Valimar. Compared to me, the Ashen Knight is nothing more than scrap metal. Accept it! You, with the heart of a lion, deserve better. You alone deserve to pilot me. Drykos? Uh. Damn. The Argent One comes. But it matters not. You shall never escape my grasp. No matter where you flee, your weary soul will never find refuge. Trikos, what was that just now? <laughs> it's been an age and a half, Leanne. You haven't changed at all from when I last saw you. No, if anything, you're more beautiful than ever. <laughs> Your flattery won't work on me. I assume you heard what became of me from Rose? Indeed. She told me of your revival, and how you'd left Erebonia in secret. What a heartless woman you are. We promised to grow old together, yet you've left me here to grow old on my own. Even so, my thoughts have always been with you. You and Evelyn's children have grown up splendidly. Your bloodline will surely be blessed with many descendants. I regret that I could not have given you the same. 
Nevertheless, I am truly happy for you. Leanne. Now please, tell me, what was that earlier? That horrible darkness hanging over you? How long has it been haunting you? And why? My name is Georg. I never had a surname, but the chief told me to pick one, so I took out the G from Gnome and went with that. The idea of having GG as my initial sounded silly to me. Repetitive. That's really all there is to it. When I left the workshop, my real memories were replaced with fake ones. Not that it was so bad. It was as if I'd become a character in a story. I played my role, going to school, making friends, unaware that I'd been regularly reporting back to the workshop the entire time. They'd used the Faceless's hypnosis techniques on me, having stolen them from Ouroboros. But honestly, it wasn't that bad, considering it was just a dream. Reviving Crow was simply a matter of efficiency, nothing more. The Chief gave me an earful for it, but I knew Crow would be a suitable candidate for the rivalries. That's the only reason I did what I did. It's the same reason I didn't kill Angie. And the same reason I gave the Courageous a chance. Now, now, there's a good boy. He has a gentle look to him. Just like you. We should be glad he hasn't taken after me. <laughs> Though I suppose if he had my rugged features, he'd have no end of admirers. <laughs> I'm sure. Besides, you resemble your father too, don't you? Though I might start to worry if you turn out half as oblivious as him. Hmm? How do you mean? <laughs> you see? But in a way, that's just what I love about your father. Take care, dear. Best of luck with tomorrow's mission. I'll be off, then. I love you, Kasha. And you as well, Reen. It's been 180 years since his passing, and only 30 since his soul found its way back to this world. A wonderful wife and a healthy child. It seems there's no need for me to be concerned. But I fear the darkness still hangs over him. Perhaps it's time I reconsider that invitation. What? Again? Honestly, you and your research projects. Well, whatever it's about this time, I'm sure you'll make it a success. Like always. Just try and make it back for the weekend, all right? My father would love to spend some time with you. As would Elisa. I'll see what I can do. I love you, Arena. Oh boy. What in Adios's name am I doing? Spending my days designing weapons instead of spending time with my wife and daughter? Not that these recent headaches are helping. Or these sudden drowsy spells. They couldn't find anything wrong with me at the clinic, though. The Panzer Soldat. With any luck, it'll revolutionize the industry as we know it. But will it be good enough for the Professor to approve as my final thesis? Wait. My final thesis? Where did that thought even come from? It's almost as though... Um... Am I trying to leave this place? Yes, you are. Open your eyes, Franz Lumen. I have already claimed the king. All that remains is his steward. Accept your fate. <laughs> Mr. Franz Reinfurt? Pardon my intrusion. 
I am one of the enforcers of Ouroboros, number nine, the Severing Eclipse. I've come to retrieve the research reports, as per your agreement with Professor Novartis. <sighs> you are Mr. Reinford, correct? An affiliate of the Thirteen Factories? Though that is indeed my name, it is not who I truly am. <sighs> Franz Reinford was nothing more than a temporary alias. It is nothing compared to my true self. A name passed down for centuries from one servant of the Great One to another. Uh, I beg your pardon. I suppose I should cast my alias aside now. You couldn't have arrived at a better time. I regret to inform you that I will not be relinquishing my research. Try and obtain it by force if you like, but be warned, it won't end well for you. Looking back, I've experienced more than my fair share of misfortune. My parents were wealthy landowners in the north, but an avalanche claimed them while I was still young. By some stroke of fate, I was taken in by the Baron of Ymir and sent to Thor's military academy. As the years went by, my career progressed well, granting me many close friends along the way. And then, well into my thirties, I met her, the woman who would become my wife. Oh, I experienced my fair share of teasing, but in spite of that, our union was blessed. It was around that time, however, that I started hearing the voice. Relinquish it to me. It belongs to me. Your soul. Your entire being. Yes. Yes. Unable to seek anyone's counsel, I tried to seal it deep within my heart. By the time we'd married and our son was born, the voice had faded into only the faintest of thoughts. But no sooner could I breathe a sigh of relief, had it returned at the very worst point of my wretched life. Thank the goddess. You're okay. Please kill him. I beg of you. Save her child. No! Why? Damn you, Arundel! What did Kasha and my son ever do to you? I'm your enemy! I'M THE ONE YOU WANT! Hadios, please! Someone answer me! God is a fiend! I don't care! I'll do anything! Take me instead if you must! Just please! Spare our son's life! Oh, how long I've waited to hear those words. Waited and waited, Drykles, for two hundred long years. This time you will be my awakener, not the Ashen Knights. Agree, and I will deliver your son from death. It was you. You're the one who did this. All of it. But I don't care anymore. Take my body. Take my soul. Do what you will. So long as you save my son, it doesn't matter what happens to me. Ebonite Ishmelga! There it is, then. 
The whole truth. So the duel the boss died in was rigged from the start? By Black Alberic. But... Even he was just a puppet. George, too. Though his circumstances were a bit different. Yeah. And what was that thing possessing Elisa's dad, anyway? It looked like he was taken over by another persona. The Chief of the Gnomes. The being that possessed him has achieved immortality through means different from mine. I suspect it lives on by becoming one with any descendant of the gnomes it deems worthy. Almost akin to a parasite of sorts. Father. We also learned the truth about Arian Road, or Leanne Sandlot as she was once known. She spent 250 years watching over the Empire, as well as the man she loved most. A saint in the truest sense of the word. But... but... that means the guy she spent all that time watching over is... I admit, I always did have my suspicions. Why, for instance, did Emperor Eugent go to such lengths to support the Chancellor? You're right. It all makes sense now. His Majesty had the entire truth in his hands this whole time. The Black Records. He knew that the Lionheart Emperor, founder of Thors, father of the Renaissance, and victor in the War of the Lions 250 years back, had been reborn as Giliath Osborne, the Blood and Iron Chancellor. I never imagined reincarnation would be possible. Paranormal bullcrap. Except it's for real this time, isn't it? Of all the things for the visions to show us. Those witless fools! Why didn't Leanne and Dreykels come to me? Did you not say we were friends? Was it all just a lie? No. I am the one at fault. How could I have been so blind for centuries? Grandmother. Rose! <laughs> Roselia, what can you tell us about this Ishmelga? The Ebon Knight. All signs point to him being the one behind all this, don't they? It radiates an aura unlike any other Divine Knight we've encountered. I do not know. This particular Divine Knight has remained mostly hidden for over a thousand years. It was absent for both the War of the Lions 250 years ago, and the Dark Dragon's appearance 900 years ago. However... It may have been the one behind them. Or perhaps, the one behind every tragic event in Erebonia's dark history. No way. <clears throat> Valimar, Ordeen, and all the other Divine Knights we've seen thus far have each had their own conscious mind. But what if that mind were to become warped by malice, amassing it as a kind of power? The Gnomes and the Hexen Clan have been at odds from the very start. Even still, we managed to reach a compromise 1200 years ago. We stood side by side as we sealed off the Great One, we worked arm in arm to help found the Empire. But 800 years ago, after the reclamation of the capital, the gnomes suddenly broke off all contact with us. And the one behind all of that was the Ebon Knight. It must have taken over the gnomes and made them into its followers. Well, that's the nice way of putting it, I guess. In reality, they're nothing more than its brainwashed minions. And so they got involved with all sorts of shady stuff, including the boss's death moving their evil plans forward the whole time. Yeah, even now. That's the curse that Albrecht was talking about. But what's its end goal? Bringing back the Great One? Or is it trying to win the rivalry of the Seven to become the Great One itself? Is that what the OZ units were created for? What I was created for? What Milliam gave her life for? Just 
the thought of it makes me sick. We can't let this stand. Uh, Rain? That thing is the reason for all this suffering. Not only in Erebonia, but in every country surrounding it. Crow, the Lance Maiden, and the Jaeger King were all made into immortals and forced into its game. It took Milliam's life, and the lives of so many others. Major Lecter's father, Major Claire's family, and others still. Innocent people, all made into its victims. Elisa's father, George, my mother, even Chancellor Osborne himself. Rain, keep it together! At this rate, the curse will take hold of you. <laughs> it seems the truth was too much for him to handle. Damn it! You gotta get it under control. Calm yourself, my Awakener. Valmar? Oh, what is this? It feels so soothing. Where are we? Is this the phase space where Divine Knights and Awakeners make their contracts? Nah. I get the feeling we're somewhere else entirely. Valmar, you can speak again? This is different from when we spoke back in the workshop, isn't it? Correct. It seems the curse has temporarily loosened its grip on me. My means of expression remain limited, however. Perhaps I will recover the ability to speak in the real world at some point. I hope so. Thank the goddess. Hear my words, Awakener and secondary contractors. The Ebon Knight is not the only one to blame for all the tragedies you named. Mankind's weakness contributed to bringing them about. If you fail to understand this, you have no hope of prevailing in the rivalries ahead. Even with the sword. The sword? Can't be. All right, it worked. Milliam. Milliam. <laughs> hey guys, did you miss me? I've been watching over you guys the whole time. Every time you got in a pickle, and every time you whooped your way right out of it! Guess I should say sorry, though, for not being strong enough. I wanted to be able to say, I saved the day, that I helped protect everyone. But I never thought I'd cause you guys all this grief instead. Milliam. You don't have to apologize. Not in the slightest. You did more for us than we ever could have asked. I'm guessing the two of you appeared to tell us something important. Am I right? Yeah. Being stuck like this helped us finally figure a few things out. First off, you were right about the rivalries being struggles for power between the Divine Knights. Crow's an immortal, so he should have totally vanished from our world after he was defeated. But it seems like you guys figured it out. Making him your kin like that bought him some more time. Though, 
when it comes to the end of the Great Twilight, um, I probably don't even need to say it. <laughs> That's me, living with the death sentence over my head. Crow! <laughs> there is one more thing to mention regarding the Ebon Knight. His power is immense, beyond the reach or understanding of this realm. He could defeat every one of us. However, this would not make him whole again. He requires a worthy opponent. As such, I expect the following will occur. The Ebon Knight will wait until one knight has absorbed the power of the other five in order to have his worthy opponent. However, because this opponent has such power, it is at this point Ishmelga could potentially be defeated. The Jaeger King's Palatinate Knight. The Steel Maiden's Argent Knight. The Prince's Vermilion Knight. Rufus's Auric Knight. And Reen's Ashen Knight, partnered with Crow's Azure Knight. It'll be one of them who'll be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ebon Knight. How bad it, Reen? Looks like we don't have much of a choice. Your rivalry at the Soul Shrine was only a preview of what's to come. Maybe we can convince the boss to join us, just like Crow. Perhaps. And from what we saw in those visions, there could certainly remain a chance to recruit the Steel Maiden to our side as well. That's right. They of all people should understand what it is we're fighting for. We can make it work. I'm sure of it. Ain't gonna be easy, but... At least now we finally got some light at the end of this tunnel. Maybe so. But I somehow doubt Rufus or the Prince will be half as eager to team up with us. So long as Valimar can win the rivalries and absorb the power of their knights, it shouldn't pose too much of a problem. With more allies and more power, we might actually have a shot against Chancellor Osborne. Our odds may be slim, but this is our best chance to defeat Ishmelga for good. I've made my decision, Valimar. Not as the sacrifice, and not as an ogre, but as myself. We're going to see these rivalries through to the very end, with you and Milium at our side. Well said, my Awakener. That's what I like to hear! I'll be right there with you all the way! Milium! Stop! Don't go! Please, wait! There's still so much I have to say! Come on, guys! You don't have to worry! Even if you can't see me, I'm always with you! Remember, we're all a team! No matter what happens! That... wasn't just a dream, was it? No. It wasn't. <sighs> now I see. She was never gone. She's been here all along. My big sister. I'm so glad. She's come such a long way. I can hardly believe it. What exactly was that, Grandmother? A liminal space between dreams and reality, bestowed unto you by the spectral moon mirror. Something similar happened back when I inherited my predecessor's responsibilities. The mirror has granted us more than expected. All those centuries of watching over it were well worth it. Yeah, they really were. Rosalia, and Emma, and Celine as well. Thank you, for everything. You could pass that on to Vita and the Rakshasa too. Props for all the help. Valimar has fallen silent once more. And it's unlikely Milliam will be able to speak to us like that again. Yet, their souls are still with us, always. Of that, we can be certain. Indeed. Now that we're all together again, there can be no more room for doubt in our path as Class 7. And as members of the Radiant Wings. 
Probably would have been screwed without you witches helping out, though. Guess that's worth a thanks or two. Definitely. I think I'm finally ready to face my father and Sharon again. Yeah, we owe you guys, big time. You guys. You're making way too big a deal over it. I didn't do anything. But I guess... I'm glad things worked out. Ah, it feels as though several centuries of weight has been lifted from my shoulders. As for the new facts that were revealed to us, I will let Vita and Thomas Lysander know what they should. That'd be a great help. Thank you. I'm just happy I was able to carry out my duty as a wandering witch. But I couldn't have done it if our family hadn't worked so hard to protect this sacred place. So thank you, Grandmother, for guiding our clan for so many years. And, more than anything, for making me the person I am today. Just, where is all this coming from? What do you think you're doing? Are you trying to bring your poor granny to tears? This old heart of mine can only take so many surprises. My word. <laughs> It would seem our little trip can be counted as a success. We should bring the good news back to His Highness and the others. Right. Best not to keep them waiting any longer. Let's be off. To the Courageous Two.